Hi. Well, what do I want? Brandy, sir. Right. Well, what's the, what's the matter? Do I look funny or something? Might it not be well for you to cut down on the drink a little? Am I bothering you? Not particularly. Where are you going? See that notch down to again? Hey, now, wait a minute. Don't start telling me my business. You're taking a big chance, Bundagas. Those temple notch dancers are high caste Hindu girls. And attention from anyone outside their own caste is apt to result in his disappearance some dark night. You, you mind your own business and keep out of my affairs. Come on, old fellow, let's be toddling along. Oh, hey, we'll take your hand off me. Who are you pulling? Just run home and sleep it off. There's a good chap. Hey, just for that, I'm going to have another one. You've had more than you can carry. Getting drunk in this country is a good way to get into trouble. Come yeah? On. Here, what? Don't you pull me. What? Hey, why don't you look where you're going? He's supposed to be an archaeologist, but the only thing he's discovered so far is the dancer Shandu over at the Kela Temple. <laughs> <laughs> Why hast thou slain one of Kali's little ones? Well, I, I didn't mean to kill the little beast. He jumped on my shoulder as I came into the temple and I struck him with my crop. Why camest thou here to defile our temple by thy presence? Well, the temple's open, isn't it? Take your hands off me, you swine! Silence! Thy speech is as profane as thine act. That's it. Tell my fortune. Find out what these dogs will suffer when the governor hears about this. Through the sacred eyes of Kali, I see the Sahib has been sent by learned men to our country to wrest from our monuments and temples the history of our wisdom and the history of her past. Sahib has deceived those who sent him. He seeks not the wise men, but their gold. Ere he leaves Asia, his pocket shall be filled to overflowing with bright gold. The gold shall not be his, but he will not scruple to take it. Knowing that on every rupee shall be written the curse of Kali. Devil Sahib, we may not punish thee, but Kali will not forget. Sometime, somehow, somewhere, Kali will mete out justice. It is said, Om Sahanto Pavatu Shanti Shanti Om. I'll show you what I think of you and your curtain.
shame. They might have killed you, Sahib. And they will kill me when they find you. Yeah, well, they shan't find you, Shanda. How did you happen to be in the temple? I had departed from the temple after the dancing ceremony. But when I knew the Sahib was in danger, I went back to help him. How did you know that I was in danger? My people feel the troubles of those they love. That's very interesting. It was almost 20 years ago, Mr. Ellis. Well, proceed, Professor Potter. Well, um, my colleagues uh, here and uh, in England financed this expedition. I, uh, that is, Mrs. Potter and I, put this Prendergast in charge. We understood that uh, the backers were to share in the uh, uh, glory or uh, uh, the uh, profits that might uh, result. That oh, might come result. to the point. Horatia, don't be so long-winded. I have to control yourself. You know, I, I can't see a thing without my glasses. Well, why don't you put them on? Uh, I'm afraid I, I left them at home. Oh, they're in your pocket. Stupid. Don't be absurd, Hyacinth. And you want me to find this uh, friend of gas, is that it? I have found... Uh, that is, Mrs. Potter and I have found this Prendergast. Uh, it seems that... I was out shopping one day last week, and my attention was attracted to a Hindu woman who gave her name to the clerk as Mrs. Priggin. Now, I put two and two together and did a little snooping. Mrs. Potter means investigating. I said snooping, and I certainly mean snooping. And what did you snoop? I mean, find out. Uh, that this uh, Mrs. Priggin and her husband live on a big estate in the suburbs. This Mr. Prane is an invalid in a wheelchair, and he's attended by an English nurse. Do you believe this Mr. Prane really is Prendergast? I know it. Any man would need more than 20 years and a pair of paralyzed legs to fool me. And you both want a share in this Hindu treasure, is that it? Certainly. Well, naturally, it would strengthen our position if I were to act as attorney for all the investors. Have you the names and addresses of these people by any chance? Ah, I have it. You're crazy. I have it. The cranial fissure on Homo Neanderthal is an endemic aberration. I know I'd find it if I kept on. Oh, no, it's out this way. That's the absent-minded creature that I've been living with for 35 years. <laughs> and now he'll spend the day in the museum among the mummies. And when he comes home tonight, he'll tell me he lost something. And if he does, I'll crown the numbskull with a poker. <laughs> uh, here is the, uh, the list oh. of the investors. It is correct, except that some of them have died. But uh, you get in touch with all of them, except the dead ones. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Before we begin, I should like to check over this list and see if the remaining investors or heirs are all present. Mrs. Potter and Professor Potter, I know. Mr. John Armstrong. Right. I'd like to get this over with as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm in the insurance business and I have a couple of hot prospects for this afternoon. But we shan't keep you long, Mr. Armstrong. Mrs. Geraldine Carfax. Yes, I'm here. Although I did have to get off my deathbed to get here. You see, I suffer so from indigestion. And, and, and my blood pressure is so low that uh, uh, I just... Uh, I'm in the insurance business. Yes. Won't you read over our new policy? We have a new disability clause. No one will ever be able to cure you but the spirit. No. I beg your pardon, but I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Stella is my companion, and I never go anywhere without her. You see, uh, I have fainting spells uh, due to my operation. Let's get down to business. Mr. David Fell. I am here. Say, maybe I can interest no. you in a... <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Now, you ladies and gentlemen represent the remaining investors or heirs of the investors of the Prendergrass archaeological expedition. I, I should like to know, uh, that is, Mrs. Potter and I should like to know, what became of the English investors? There were but two of them, and they died six months ago, suddenly and very mysteriously. Mysteriously? They were murdered. Scotland Yard is still investigating the case. That's neither here nor there. Have you seen this Crane person? Yes, Mrs. Potter, I have. He admitted his identity and explained that he changed his name to Prend for personal reasons. He informed me that he would be very glad to see and meet the investors and discuss a settlement on certain conditions. And what conditions? Mr. Prend will explain all the conditions tomorrow night. He wants to have you all at his home at 8.30. Well, if you meet me here in my office at 7.30, we can all go out together. Okay, I'll be here. And incidentally, while I'm gone, I wish you'd look this policy over. I shan't be able to go, my dear. I must be at the museum. They're going to unwrap the mummy of Ramesses IV. Listen, you worm. You'll be at Mr. Prynne's house tomorrow night and forget all about the Ramesses IV, or I'll make a mummy out of Potter the First. <laughs> Ramesses, I used to smoke them. <laughs> well, I beg your pardon, Professor. I'll keep my hat if you don't here. mind. Take your own hat. Although I ridicule the whole thing as an ancient superstition, I came to know that the priest was right. Suddenly in the dead of the night, I hear the soft poundings of the tom-toms. Grotesque shadows appear on the walls. Great hairy hands press on my throat. Strangling. Strangling. My health has been destroyed. And as you see, I'm a helpless cripple. All these years, I've wandered over the globe, seeking some place where I could find peace. But nowhere in this world can you escape the curse of Kali. Finally, I went back. I wanted to return the treasure to the temple, but the priests wouldn't take it. They said it was a curse. I've often thought of the original investors in the expedition, and I wanted to give them what was rightfully theirs. I was afraid that the curse would be carried on to anyone who had any part of the treasure. Finally, I went to England and gave two of them their share. Within a month, both of these people had been found murdered. <laughs> then I knew I was right, that the curse of Kali would extend on to anyone who possessed any part of the treasure. I... I realized my days were numbered. So I came home. Back to the United States. To spend my last days in the country of my birth. Fantastic. Fiddlesticks. If you're so afraid of apes and monkeys, Mr. Prynne, what have you got that one for? I had an obsession several years ago that I might conciliate Kali by being good to the animals that were sacred to him. I made large endowments to zoological gardens for the care of monkeys. And that one 
I raised and kept with me until he died. There was no use. Kali would not be appeased. This is all very interesting, Mr. Prynne, but I should like to know when we are going to get our money. When you've learned to appreciate the curse that goes with it. Just what do you mean by that? I'll give you all your shares on one condition, that you come here and live in this house with me for a week and learn what happens to the possessor of it. Why, this is absurd. It's just a scheme to, to, to cheat us out of our money. Pay me my share immediately or go to court about it. Mr. Fells, it will take you much longer than a week to get the money by litigation. My terms are really quite easy. Shanda is an excellent cook, and I've engaged a new maid. I suppose you're going to tell us that's one of your eight ghosts. No, the phenomena I've been describing is not as easily explained as what you've just heard. That's a plumber putting in a new heating system. I consider Mr. Prenn's conditions very reasonable. And as your attorney, I suggest that you comply with it. I, I sincerely hope that you'll take Mr. Ellis's advice. And if you do, I'll expect you any time tomorrow. Wait a minute, Mr. Prenn. We have a right to know where that money is. It's here, in this house. Over two million dollars in gold and jewels. Two million dollars? Uh, I'll stay. I'll stay. <laughs> try and get me out of here. <laughs> Just try and get me out. Are you satisfied? Well, I still have time to see Ramesses unwrapped. Oh, forget about Ramesses and try remembering where you put your hat. Oh, dear. I feel terrible. You know, all this excitement has brought my nervous indigestion again. Well, they say that's the beginning of the end. Oh, don't, don't be silly, Stella. Well, my grandmother felt just like that five minutes before she died. Well, don't be looking there. The money isn't hidden in here. Well, I've read in stories that the best way to hide anything is to put it in the most obvious place. It's probably locked up in the safe down his room. I know one thing. Tonight, I'm going to have a seance. Yeah. Pocahontas can tell me where the money is. Hello. Let me speak to Mr. Gage, please. This is Gage. This is Felt. Listen, old man. You'll have to give me another day. Yeah, and that's all you'll get. Nobody watches in the game with me than does me out of five grand. Yeah, and have that dough tomorrow or else. All right. I'll get it somehow. I got into Mr. Prynne's room by mistake. How did you know it was Mr. Prynne's room? Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. That's quite all right, Miss Browning. It is Miss, not Mrs. 
No, it's Miss. Good. I'm suffering with heart trouble and dizzy spells. Oh, how long has this been going on? Ever since I first met you. Well, then it's probably temporary. You'll get over it. Oh, no. If you promise to take my case, Doctor, I'll never get over it. Your nerves seem to be very good. Ah, uh, in my business, you need nerve. I'm in the insurance business. Can I interest you in a policy? I have a policy. Really? Yes. My policy is never to get intimate with strangers. Good. <laughs> now that we're practically engaged, tell me, how did you come to get mixed up with the friends, the Hindus, and the apes? Well, I was engaged as a private nurse in London by Mr. Prem. Oh, so you're English. Oh, I'm so happy. I always wanted to marry an English girl so I could have crumpets and tea for breakfast. Then I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. Oh, don't tell me you can't make crumpets. No. No, I can't make crumpets. I don't like tea. And I'm not thinking of getting married. Tell me, what do you make of all this ape business? I, d I don't know. Uh, at night, I, I hear strange noises, tom-toms, and footsteps on the stairs. I've often had to give Mr. Prenn first aid treatment when he's been nearly frightened to death. Oh, you're scared, aren't you? Yes, but jobs are scarce, and Mr. Prenn pays me twice as much as I could get anywhere else. Did it ever occur to you that this whole thing might be a fake, a hoax, on Prenn's part? Oh, that couldn't be, Jack. Why, the thing is gradually killing Mr. Prenn. That woman gives me the creeps. Shonda is a strange person. Person? <laughs> she looks more like Gandhi's ghost. Frontal osteology is egregiously recessive. Yes. I suppose you know that's caused by the malconjunction of the prenatal hiatus. Yeah, quite right. I guess if that guy got a stranglehold on your throat, it'd be just too bad, eh? Yes, his gargantuan prehensility would be titanic. You don't say so. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mr. Ellis. Yes? Here's something might interest you. A uh, book on the law. Oh. Uh, well, goodbye. Oh. Oh, don't forget, I have a patient to take care of. But uh, I'm about to have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Save it till later. Time for your medicine, Mr. Prince. I was wondering where you were. I was out in the garden with Mr. Armstrong. You know, he's really a very likable person. Aren't you afraid I'll get jealous? <laughs> you couldn't be anything but your nice old self. Now, come on. Come on. Please. It's very interesting. Let's take a walk in the garden, Professor. Well, I, uh... All right, a little fresh air might do me good. Professor, I want to show you this. Oh, there you are, you idiot. Horatio, what did you do with your clothes? Why, I packed them in the suitcase. Oh, you did? You're quite sure of that? Uh, yes, my dear, I remember because at the same time, I packed the dismembered bones of Ptolemy III and sent them to the museum. You numbskull! You sent your clothes to the museum and packed Ptolemy III in your suitcase. My hyacinth, I can hardly realize... Yes, you did. Now you get Ptolemy III off of my bed or he'll spend the rest of his days at the garbage can. I beg your pardon, Mrs. Potter. Uh, something important I want to show you and the professor. It came to my office this morning. Do not permit your clients to remain in the Prenn house. They will be killed, one by one. Scotland Yard.
I've never been to a seance. I've heard they're lots of fun. <laughs> the only spirits I know anything about are the hundred proof kind. Mr. Armstrong, this is no time for levity. We may all learn something of vital interest to all of us. Professor Potter, uh, what are your ideas on psychical phenomena? I don't believe anything I can't see. Anything you can't see? Why, you're as nearsighted as a bat. Now, I have sense. Hush up, Horatio. We shall now all place our hands upon the table. Place your left hand over your neighbor's right. We shall now concentrate. What's the matter with you? You look foolish. We must have all the light out. You who have gone beyond the borders of time and place, hear our plea for enlightenment. <laughs> Did she have to sing it? Oh, God, is it thee? Speak to me. Tell me what force of evil afflicteth this household. What is that which afflicts our nostrils and enervates our senses? It is I, Pocahontas, will answer thee. This night, one of you will pass beyond the veil. Be well, the vapor of death. Around all of you. Oh, look! <laughs> it's a reflection of that. Oh, don't be absurd. Oh, it's moving. Turn up the light. Where's the switch? Over by the door. Ah! Oh, what is it? What's the matter? Mr. Carter! Oh. She's dead. Maybe we could revive her. I don't think so. Her neck is broken. This is the kind of thing that's haunted me for years. And it will end only when I'm in my grave. Oh, what do you think we should do, Horatia? Get Ptolemy the third and get out of here. Pocahontas was right. Wait a minute. Where did you come from? Outside. What are you doing in here? Same as everybody else, I guess. Well, what were you doing outside? Looking inside. No. Why were you outside looking inside? I was trying to get a line on the thief. What thief? The guy that stole my monkey wrench. I think this is a bug house. The house is all right. It's the people that are in it. You're right. The first thing to do is to send for the police. <laughs> what can the police do? Maybe they could find my monkey wrench. Nobody can solve this mystery but Pocahontas. Never heard of him. Say, this Pocahontas is the one that caused all this trouble. As far as I'm concerned, you can take her right back and sit her down in her wigwam. Oh, that woman. There you are, folks. Now you can see what confronts us. Death is just around the corner. Have yourself insured. Take out one of our new $20,000 policies. Easy payment.
That is prohibition. There's been a murder committed here. Who did it? That's your business. Listen, lady, Inspector Pickens of the Homicide Squad don't take no lip from nobody. Oh, Horatia, I'm being insulted. Sir, I'll have you know this is my wife. All right, your apologies accepted. Who owns this joint? My home. These people are my guests. My housekeeper, my name is Prem. All right, Prem, how did it happen? We were having a seance when Miss Carfax was strangled by the ape. The ape? No, not, not this one. This is a stuffed ape. A what? Stuffed ape. Hey, you. Where are you going? Get a drink of water. Well, don't try to leave the house. And that goes for everybody here. Well? It's a long story, officer. Well, make it a short story and... Now, officer, you know as much about it as we do. Hindus, tom-toms, apes, haunted houses. Say, are you sure this seance wasn't a sleigh ride? I'm sure I don't understand you. I've got it. All right, what do you got? The phenomena connected with the frontal development of the orangutan must be indigenous to all the anthropoids. Gosh, you have got it. Wait a minute. Where are you going? To the zoo. Uh, well, sit down. You're in one right now. Sit down, Horatio. Pipe down. I'm getting the orders around here. Boyer. Yeah. You go out and search the house and the grounds. You see any apes or anything that looks like monkey business? Bring it in here. Okay. You go out and watch the back door. And don't let nobody out. That. Has the coroner gone yet? Yeah, he took the body with him. No apes? No apes. No apes. No apes. They talked to the servants. That Hindu woman does all the cooking and housekeeping. She don't know nothing. You know what? No. What? Something funny going on around here. I don't think that guy in the wheelchair is crippled. Struck me he might be phony. It struck me too. Me too. You go down and find out whether he's really paralyzed or not. It'd be clever about it. Use your beam. Be subtle. The dial. Subtle. Thank you, my dear. There, how's that? Is that comfortable? My dear, I, I don't know what I'd do without you. I really think you owe it to yourself to take out a policy. The way things are now, we don't know when one of us is going to be murdered. But who would I make the beneficiary? Now that Mrs. Carfax is gone, I have no one left but Pocahontas. Well, leave it to Pocahontas. One thing, she won't squander it. I do hope all this excitement doesn't affect you, Mr. Prem. I think I'll live through it. No, no, that, that's quite all right. Any clues yet, officer? No, but I'm on the Taylor one right now. I beg your pardon, my foot slipped. Oh. I don't anybody in either room. What's the idea? I lost my bit. What bit? Oh. Just a little bit. Are you sure you lost it in here? No, I think I lost it in the garage. Why don't you go out there and look for it? It's warmer in here. What's the use? What'll you find out? I found out he's paralyzed, all right. Didn't let anybody know what you were after, did you? You think I'm dumb? Huh? I was subtle, just like you said. Oh. There it is again. What is it? 
The town fellow. <laughs> of his own medicine. That's the strangest oh. looking ape I ever saw. Why, oh. it's not an ape, it's a man. saw the ape's hands when Mrs. Carfax was killed. Ah, you were seeing things. What's that smell? Incense. Now that I remember, incense was burning in a bowl behind Mrs. Carfax. So what? We've caught the ape that killed Carfax. You forget one thing, Inspector. Yeah, what? Who killed Fells? Yeah, I never thought of that. Bell's neck was broken just like Mrs. Carfax's. Yeah, so what? A creature of superhuman strength did the killing. Yeah? Well, if it was an ape, how did he... Oh. Ah, so this is the way he got in and out. Listen, you mugs, you go and find that ape and you'll be pounding the beef. Oh, Chief, we looked all over the joint. There ain't a sign of it anywhere. How about the garage? Search the ground, search everything, and find that Tom Tom gadget. No son of an ape's gonna make a monkey out of me. Come on now, get going. Don't come back without some information. Come on, outside, everybody. Poor Fells. I, I can't understand it. What I can't comprehend is the reason for the monkey suit. I think the explanation for that is relatively easy. Fells was heavily in debt. He knew the money was in the house and made up his mind to get it. No doubt he got that gorilla suit when he went to town this afternoon. He thought that if any one of us saw him prowling around the house, he'd have time to get back to his room during the excitement. Poor devil. If he'd only believed in the curse on the treasure. We'll all be killed one by one, just like rats in a trap. And for what? Just a few paltry dollars. I, for one, am leaving this house immediately. Horatia, get my coat. Nobody's leaving this joint until I solve this murder. Horatia, are you going to allow this vulgarian to browbeat me? Sit down. Now, see here, my man. Sit down! Oh, if I were only married to a man instead of a dictionary. Now, listen. Nobody's putting nothing over on me about this ape business. There's a murderer in this house, and I'm going to find him. Yes, and while you're trying to find the murderer, We'll all be killed. Oh, no, you won't. I'll keep my eye on every one of you. I won't turn my back for a minute. Give me police headquarters. This is Pickens. Let me talk to Corner. Hello, bud. Come on out and get another body. Yeah, somebody croaked him when I turned my back. Oh, don't worry. With Ned Pickens on the job, there'll be no more murder. Wait a minute. Who's out of this room? Armstrong. The insurance guy. He's the one I suspected all along. Let go! Help! Quick! and the ape climbed in through that window. I suppose you expect us to believe that, Hoy. Well, what do you mean? Find the apes? No, nope. no apes. What about the garage? Nothing there. Do you hear that? We've combed this house and grounds from end to end, and there's no apes around. 
You're the guy that called our attention to this instance before. You know what I think? What? I think you're the murderer. And this last gag of yours is just a stunt to throw suspicion away from yourself. Why, well, that's absurd. I've been listening to some of your talk, and I know what your purpose is. You're crazy. Yeah, crazy like a fox. You cook up this whole thing for one reason. And well, what's that? So as you could sell a lot of insurance. I've never heard anything so ridiculous Boy, in my life. Boyer, Clancy, put him under arrest, and then he won't be any more murders. <laughs> She's dead. That poco spirit sure let her down. Uh, How's he? He'll be all right. What happened? Walker felt faint. She started towards the French window to get some air. Suddenly the tom-toms began. The ape came through the window. She screamed. He grabbed her. That, that's, that's all I remember. I, I must have Ain't it? Well, Mr. Big Shot, I guess that lets me out. You can save yourself the trouble, Inspector. I assure you that ape is quite dead. It's ridiculous, keeping us cooped up here like this. Three people have been killed already. The house is bewitched. Mr. Ellis. You are our attorney. I insist, uh, that is, uh, Mrs. Potter insists, that you take means to get us out of here. My clients are perfectly justified in wishing to leave here, Inspector. You have no right to make them stay here, to become victims of whatever's going on in this house. You're no closer to the solution of this mystery than you were after the first murder. Boy, you ought to get a medal for the way you gum this case up. This isn't a case, it's an epidemic. Telephone. Telephone. Phone. Hello. Oh, hello, bud. Yeah, I'm up to my neck in apes. Come on out. We got two bodies for you now. By the time you get here, it'll probably be an even half dozen. We'll wait for the coroner, and then we'll call it a night. Cigarette. Cigarette. When the coroner gets here, why, we'll take a statement from each of you as to what you did and saw last night. And then we'll all meet at the district attorney's office tomorrow. Boyer! Oh, Clancy! Cover that door! Cover everything! Look! Look there! If it looks suspicious, let him have it. Well... Hello. What do you mean, hello? Oh, gosh. Hello. Where have you been for the last half hour? Oh, here and there. Yeah, well, just what have you been doing here and there? Oh, this and that. Do you know anything about this Tom Tom? What's his last name? Say, listen, you. Pop out with a good alibi or I'll pinch you for murder. The only way that you can prove that you're not a murderer around here is to get yourself killed. What'd she say? She thinks I should go out into the garden and get some air. Well, all right. Don't try to make a getaway. There's a cop out there. Who's that? Where? At the door. <laughs> Be calm. 
Who's dead or missing? Smith. Where's Smith? He's gone. Yeah, I figured that out, too. Where are you going? I'm going to find Mr. Prim. He may be hurt. All right. Inspector, what? Read this. What do you make of it? This is the second note I've had like this. The man who writes them evidently knows what he's writing about, and I suggest that we follow his instructions. Well, I should say so. If you don't value your lives, I value mine. Say, remember, this is a frame-up of yours. Pickens will be right with you. Clancy, go out and find Penn and that Hindu woman and tell him I want him at the district attorney's office tomorrow and make it emphatic. Tomorrow? Emphatic! Wait a minute, what about Ella? Uh, Miss Browning, we can't go out and leave her here alone. Oh, fiddlesticks! She's lived here long enough without getting into trouble. Let's get out of here. Yeah, I want to meet this Scotland Yard guy and get the low down. Maybe it's an English shape. And the district attorney wants to see us as soon as we get through here. Well, it's almost time for Scotland Yard to put in an appearance. I bet this is all just a scheme to get us away from the print house. I've been doing some thinking, and it's going to take more than an old foot of an ape to make me give up my share of that money. It's too bad that ape didn't attack me. Yes, it is too bad. What's that? If he had, I have no doubt of what the outcome would have been. Why, Ella, dear, where, where are you going? I'm, I'm leaving, Mr. Prim. Leaving? What for? I'm afraid of what's going on in this house. There might be more murders. I don't think so, my dear. Now those other people are gone. Why, you think they had something to do with the murders? One of them did. I'm quite sure of that, my dear. But what about the ape? I've come to believe that the ape was an obsession of mine, brought on by brooding for years over that foolish curse. Please don't leave me. I don't know what to say, Mr. Prince. You know, there's, there's something I've wanted to talk to you about for days. But I hesitated because... Ella, darling, I wanted to ask you to be my wife. John does. No, dear, she's just my housekeeper. You know, she's been brooding a great deal lately, and I think she's terribly homesick. And I think I'll let her go back. There's no hurry. Take your time and think it over. Well, uh... In the meantime, please don't leave me. And after all, my dear, a brave little nurse doesn't run away from her duty. All right, Mr. Prim, I'll stay. I think I'll go to bed now. Good night. Scotland Yard. Oh, well. The plumber. You, the man from Scotland Yard? Yep, I've seen him before. He's the McCoy, all right. Scotland Yard, incredible. Scotland Yard first became interested in the case when two people were killed in Friend's house in London. The case baffled the Yard officers in London, and they came to believe implicitly that the Hindu curse was behind the murders. Nonsense! That's what I thought. And when I was assigned to the case, I found out that Mr. Pren was having a new water system installed in his house. That's how I became the dumb plumber. Have you solved this mystery yet? I have. Then why didn't you tell us about it last night and prevent the murders? I didn't solve it until after the murders. As a matter of fact, we haven't any actionable evidence yet. We must trap the ape and whoever is behind him. That's why I asked you to meet me here. All right, let's hear the story. Well, we're not all here yet. We must wait for Miss Ella Browning. But you didn't say anything about her in your note. She wasn't in the room when I left. One of you would have had to tell her. And the walls at the friend house have ears. I left a note in her room. She should be here any minute. 
Why didn't you tell me? I'd have gotten her out of there. I don't care for this whole setup. Uh, Sander. You know, I don't think you've been looking at all well lately. You think so, Sahib? Yes, I, I was thinking that, uh, an ocean voyage might do you good. How, how do you think you'd like a trip back home? Will the Sahib go with me? Uh, well, no. No, you, you see, Shanda, I, uh, I have a lot of important things to attend to here. Do you wish me to go alone? Yes. Uh, well, that is, uh, you can go on ahead, and uh, as soon as I clear things up, I'll join you. Very well. That's a good girl. <sighs> Not bad for a cripple, eh? My people have taught the Sahib many tricks. You know, I have to laugh when I think how we fooled all those saps with the curse of Kali. <laughs> Kali, old kid, you're all right. Come on, Shanda. Drink a toast to Kali. Kali, my pal. Here you are to Kali, who knows nothing. And here's to Kali, who knows everything. Well, here's to both of them. All six of them, long may they wave. Yes, sir, Kali, we, we certainly fooled them, didn't we? When that old priest of yours spouted all that junk about a curse, he didn't know I'd have a chance to make good use of it someday, did he? Did he? <laughs> there, there. You... It's a tom tom. Another murder. Ella! If anything happens to that girl. It's the tom tom again. I know, but it's gone now. Where's Mr. Prim? He is asleep. For a man, he's tired. The tom toms didn't even awaken him. Are you sure he's asleep? He's asleep. The man Sahib must also be tired. Why does she not go to rest? Oh, that's what I was trying to do when those darn tom-toms started again. It is done, O Kali. Revenge is thine.
her room. trying to do? Want to see who it is? Why, his head won't come off. Huh? Why, this ain't the real McCoy. The whole thing is so obvious, folks. This man friend was a self-centered miser, and when the investors in the old expedition insisted on a showdown, he preferred to kill them rather than give up the money. Is that clear? The only thing that's clear to me is that we're not going to get any of that money. Now, this Shonda, the Hindu woman, was also a priestess of Kali and could train an ape. Where did they get the ape? Six months ago, an ape was stolen from the Metropolitan Zoo. The same thing happened in London a year ago. Mr. Smith, what we'd really like to know is how the murders were committed. Yeah. yeah. Very simple, my dear Mr. Pickens, very simple. The ape was trained to go immediately to the incense when it heard the tom-tom and break the neck of the first person it met. Miss Browning, I hope you've recovered from the shock. Thank you very much. You have. Where did they hide the ape? <laughs> In the secret panel of that bookcase. Ah! But Prem was paralyzed. Clancy proved that. <laughs> That's what he thought. But a man of Prem's willpower could easily fail to react to a kick in the shin. If Prem was the murderer, how come he got croaked? Yeah. Yeah. Chanda was jealous of Miss Browning, the nurse, and had the ape kill Prem. She also tried to have the ape kill Miss Browning. Chanda, while we're standing here gassing, she's getting away. Fire, yeah. Clancy. Don't worry. She won't get far. I've attended to that. It looks like everybody is handling this case but me. <laughs> ah! 